Today we're going to take a look at the i1 Display Pro uh, from Xrite to create an ICC profile for our display. Now, before we get into the details of all the settings and all that, let's first talk about why we bother to create an ICC profile in the first place. Well, um, first of all we want consistency. We want our display to view the same colors every time we use it. So in order to do that we need a neutral device to tell us if it's still the same. Um, another thing is that um, dis displays are not all the same. Uh, compare it to walking into a TV store. If you walk in there you see a wall of TVs all switched on to the same channel and they all look different. None of them look exactly the same in color. And that's basically due to settings but also due to just differences in the equipment itself. They're never identical. So what we want to do with a profile is the following. Let, let's make a drawing. If you consider this to be the target we want to get to, this is the ideal behavior of a display. Then if we have a certain display we hook up, might be off here. If we have another one, might be off here. If we have a really good one, it might be off just only here. But basically all of them will be different from the ideal behavior. And what we do with an ICC profile is to try to get the behavior as close as possible to the ideal. That's the purpose of an ICC profile. So, um, to do that we use this device. And we need to hook it up, of course, to our USB port. and it comes with software. In this case, it is the i1 Profiler software. Now, the i1 Profiler software is the most advanced package for profiling from Xrite. So it can do every type of profiling for every type of device using any device from Xrite. It just um, is limited by the device you hook up to it. So the um, licensing is hooked up, linked to the device. In this case, we are allowed to do um, just the display profiling and projector profiling. And we can have a look at the demo for printer profiling. But today we're going to just focus on the display uh, profiling. So let's uh, start that first. Um, before we hit the um, start button, there's a basic and advanced selection here. We're going to start off with basic and um, and later on we'll switch to the advanced to look at the other features that are available when we do. But now we stick to basic. We go to display profiling and um, we have a cinema display which is correct. The type of display is recognized automatically. You can set it yourself if you know it's different from what it's recognizing but only do it if you know what type of display it is and you know it's uh, off. This will usually give you fine results. Um, the white point of our display is the next selection we have to make and by default D65 is the one used in most applications that do a display profile. So you can leave it at that. It just means that the color of white we get when we send RGB 255, 255, 255 to our display will have a certain color. It will never be uh, pure white, there's no such thing as pure white. White depends on the light you're in. Compare that to a whole piece of paper you hold in the sunlight. At the sunrise it will not have the same color as it does at noon because the sunlight varies in color. So to get consistency we need to choose a white point. And the most commonly used for photography is D65. So we're just going to stick to that. We'll cover like, the other ones later on. The luminance level is the other next setting. Luminance means how much brightness will my display uh, give me. And if you set that too high, your uh, display will be too bright or will not be able to reach that level of luminance because there's a limitation to how much luminance a uh, display can give you. If you set it too low, the surrounding light might be too much for you to see your colors properly. So. Um, 120 is a good starting point to 
uh, use as a lighting point. It varies depending on the ambient light you're in and the device enables you to do an ambient light measurement. So we'll cover that in the advanced options too. So for now we'll stick to 120 and we'll hit next to get started. And notice here that our workflow is indicated. So this is step two of our workflow and this is the actual measurement part. So here we have a few settings before we start. Um, that's automatic display control. Most displays can be controlled by your computer. That means that most of the settings can be identified and changed by your computer software. Um, if not, then you can have settings changed manually. But if it's recognized automatically, I'd say go for that one. You can of course change your brightness, contrast and RGB gains if they are available on your display. But we're using here a Mac Cinema display which is comparable to an iMac, MacBook Pro, MacBook Air, anything like that that just has brightness control. So we don't have contrast and RGB gain settings anyway. So we'll stick to the automatic display control for this one. And we choose start measurement. Now the device has two measuring modes. It can measure ambient light, which is the position it's in right now, and it measures that through this little ambient light sensor, or it can measure actually colors from the display, and for that you need to pull out and rotate the head so it faces the other way. There's a lens here, and now it can measure colors through the lens. The little thingy here is a counterweight you use to keep it in balance on your display. So you hook it up, like so, and make sure it fits against your screen, so it's snugly fit against your screen. Now we click next and the software will now be checking for automatic display control. So we'll check if the automatic display control is available on our system. And it is, so we'll adjust the values that it can. The measurements done for a profile uh, do not take very long. They take about five minutes in total but they need to be done on a regular basis. So uh, try doing that more than just once. Uh, I say once every four weeks is a good starting point because then you have enough consistency. Okay, the measurement just stopped because it has uh, recognized that our measured white luminance is actually 106 candela per square meter and we opted for 120. So we need to bring the brightness level up. So we can do that by using the brightness keys on our keyboard and see if we get close enough to it. Well, we're pretty close, 121. Uh, here's a little tip if you want to get to the exact value. If you hit your command tab key, you get to your finder. There you can open your system preferences and uh, move it down a little bit so it doesn't block the um, device for measuring color and go to displays and there you will have a brightness slider and the brightness slider works together with your brightness key so if I hit the key plus you see the slider move up a couple of places too if I hit minus it goes back so it makes more steps when I hit the keys than when it does when I just slide the slider so by sliding it myself I can get to exactly the value I want see now it's 120 exactly then we go back to the screen and we click next. So now the actual color measurement begins. So what, what's basically being done now is colors are sent to the display and this device measures the actual color that the display is emitting and it's neutral. It knows which color uh, it's receiving. It doesn't have uh, a brain that interprets uh, different for each person like it does for your eye but it's, it's consistent, so it makes your display profile consistent. Um, and it goes through all the basic colors. It goes through red, green, and blue, obviously, because you need those primary colors to create any color on screen. But it will also go through a gray balance to get your gray balance correct. And it does um, um, mixed colors, like the greenish colors we see, the purplish colors now. Um, so it gets a more accurate profile. The more measurements you do in a profile, the less guesswork it is. Because a profile is just a bunch of measurements 
and the more you measure the less calculations you have to do guessing which color would be displayed by the display for the colors you're not measuring. So it makes sense to do a bit more uh, measurement colors than just the basic red, green and blue ones to get more accuracy in your profile. There will be an indicator on the display showing you how much time is remaining. It's now less than one minute. And after it's done with the measurements, it will also do a, a verification process. So it will verify the colors to see if the measurements were uh, still consistent from the time it started. That's just to prevent you from creating a profile that's not correct because, for instance, you had your display just switched on which you should never do. You should wait 30 minutes at least before you start measuring um, a profile. That's because your display needs to warm up and if it's cold it might give different colors than it does after half an hour. So the verification process is almost complete. So this is actually how long it would take for you um, to do a profile. So it's just a couple of minutes. Oh, note also that your ambient light should not change too much. If you're creating a profile in an environment where the light changes all the time, uh, you're not going to view colors very accurately because the colors around you will influence what colors you see on the screen. So try to be in a room where the ambient light is consistent and preferably no windows um, with lots of bright sunlight. If you don't have a room without windows, make sure you don't have direct sunlight shining on your display because that will ruin how you perceive colors. Okay, the measurement is done. We take the device off and we rotate it back into its ambient light position. We click it back. Then we hit next. And we're not done yet, so don't quit the software because nothing is actually set because we still have to calculate the profile. The measurements are done, but we still have to set it. So click on the next step, either by going to ICC Profile or clicking on Next. And here we're presented with a file name. Now I'm going to name this i1, so I know I did this with the i1 software. And I'm going to call this one Basic. That's, that's how I created this, I just did the basics. Um, it's installed in my user level profile, that's my own folders within our operating system and I can have a reminder set every four weeks or no, no reminder every week or one or two or three weeks. I prefer four weeks because that gives me enough consistency and it doesn't bother me every week to do a profile. So I say create and save profile and it's now calculating the profile and applying it to your system. So it's now active on your system. For whatever applications you use it will be active as a display profile because that's uh, given system setting um, and you can show the uh, see the effects it has by choosing one of those images and I prefer the, the black and white one that's in here um, because it can show you differences better you have a before and after button if you switch to before you can see that the colors before I did the profile were more bluish more harsh colors and afterwards they're more neutral the gray balance is more neutral in the other colors the effect is less strong but in a gray balance you can greatly see it so before and after uh, it's slightly dimmed because we set it at 120 candela if we wanted more light we would get a higher candela setting um, but we can choose the uh, ambient light value ourselves or measure it and we'll show that in the advanced section so we're done for now uh, with the basic one. Oh, let's uh, show before I uh, quit this one, show the other things that are here. Here you see a 3D model of the, the profile we just measured in the lab model with a luminant axis going from dark to light, A and B axis going from um, a, a green and uh, red and yellow and blue. Uh, that's a different type of model than RGB or CMYK. We'll cover that in uh, specific videos on color models. The next one is the uh, targeted and the achieved white point which is indicated here and the 
white points what we wanted it was d65 and we got 6535 so that's fine and these are the xy which is another color model um, values that uh, match this color and 120 is the luminance we wanted and we got 119 so that's close enough Contrast ratio, uh, native actual contrast ratio is 652. The higher contrast ratio is of your screen, uh, the more uh, gamut usually your screen has. So the last one here is the curves that it used to adjust the color. So you can see that blue was slightly diminished um, and red is slightly increased to get to our D65 color instead of our uh, native color that we had before we did a profile. So that's the basic way of doing it. Now let's go back to the home and then switch to advanced. You see that we have more options here now. We have display profiling, quality and uniformity. Um, the profiling part still basically is the same. It just gives us um, uh, the option to do additionally quality and uniformity so we can check if our display is within certain specifications and we can check if the uniformity of the display is correct so that means if on all places of the screen the colors are correct because if in the center your colors are good but in the bottom and the top they're completely different it's still very hard to judge your colors so let's start off with the profiling part again and uh, cover more the settings that are available. Um, you notice that the help is now replaced by more settings. We can have each of those settings saved. So the page data for each of those steps can be saved on a setting so you can recover those later on. Now for the luminance levels and uh, we can choose from D50 to D75 which are just standard uh, D values or native which we had at the start or a daylight temperature and if you choose that you can just set it yourself so you can have a color, cho color temperature chosen from 5000 to 9300 which basically is the variance in color of the sunlight you get so uh, if you do that manually you, you can do that if you know that the target that your images will be viewed at will be viewed with a specific color temperature. Uh, then you can modify your colors uh, looking at the right colors that would be appearing at the uh, place where you'll be placing your images. But um, the other one we can do is we can measure a color. So we can measure the color temperature of the light we're in. So the, actually the device is used to measure the ambient light color temperature. Um, we won't do that right now. To show you the differences of all of these different uh, values, I have done the measurements with all of them and I've saved those profiles, so I'll show you later on. For now, I'll just choose a different one to show you that we do get a different result from D65 when we use a different color. So we're going to go for D50 and the luminance level, I, in the easy one, just set to 120, but I can also do a measurement to get the right level of ambient light because or, or our luminance because the luminance level for my display it depends on my ambient light if I'm in a poorly lit room I need less luminance if I'm in a brightly lit room like this I need more luminance so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the device in its ambient light mode with the, the sensor pointing up to measure the ambient light so I'm going to place it somewhere next to my screen and I'm going to hit the measure button and I get here a 153 candela per square meter. So that's higher than the 120 that I used uh, before. So we're going to stick to that and keep that measurement. Um, then the next one is the contrast ratio. If we want to choose that from a contrast ratio from a profile, we can. Now that might be a very bit complicated, but a paper has a contrast ratio just like a display and if you go to a very plain paper, an uncoated paper the contrast will not be very big because the, the black will not be very dark and the white will not be very white so all the colors are less contrast and if you want to match that on your display you can choose to match that with a printout 
Normally you'd go for a native contrast ratio because you want to just use the available contrast on your display, not limiting to what you have on an output device. There's a flare crack, that means you can adjust for any lights that's shining into your screen that might affect the color you view. So, um, <coughs> we'll use that one too. And we also have the ambient light smart control. Um, what that does is it alerts me when my ambient light changes. Um, or it can even do a, a, a readjustment of my profile uh, when it does change. Now the last thing I don't think I want to do because I think I want to have a consistent ambient light and I maybe would like to be notified if it does change but I don't want to be compensated for it because um, I think I need a consistent light to get consistent viewing results. So that's done for settings and we'll go to the next step. And we get more options here because we're in advanced mode. So we can use the defaults or we can set either one of these to override the defaults. The profile version is version 4. Version 4 is the new standard in profiling. Um, old software will not support version 4 profile. So if your profile somehow does not work in the rest of your software, try making one with version 2 set. The quality of a version profile 4 and version 4 profile is slightly better, uh, especially in the perceptual rendering intent. Uh, there's a section on what a rendering intent is in another video, but um, for now we'll leave it at version 4. The tone response curve uh, is the gamma setting that always was there in Photoshop and your systems um, before we had actually uh, systems to measure color and gamuts with. So the default that is now used both in Windows and Mac it used to be different but the default used in both now is 2.2 so leave it at that unless you know you need to do something else. Now the profile type can be table based or matrix based. By default it's matrix based. Uh, matrix is just more compact, table is more accurate. So I prefer to use table based if I'm doing advanced mode because that just gives me more accuracy in my profile. So we're going to go for next again. And the next choice we get, which we also didn't get in the easy mode, is the amount of patches we want to use for our profile. Now we can go from 119 patches up to 478. You won't notice a big difference um, in between the 478 and 119, so I think this might be slightly over the top to use. But for now we'll go for the medium one. And we'll fast forward when we're measuring so you don't get bored with the looking at the uh, screen measuring just colors. Uh, you can also do patches from spot colors so you can add specific colors uh, to match specific colors on your display or you can load up an image to get all the colors within that image so you can get a good match for that particular image. Not too good I think. I think you should use a patch set because it covers all colors. That's more useful than either of these. So click on next again. And now we're actually ready to start measuring. So we do the start measurement button and we have to get the device set to the normal mode again and place it onto the screen. And we click next. Oh, we first have to do the flare correct. I forgot that. I have to take it away. So we go back. And we go start measurements. Because I have the flare correction uh, option set. Um, I have to take the device, point it towards my screen, like I would be viewing it myself, and click on next when I'm ready. So I click on next, and it will now measure flare on my display. A little bar indicating how far it is and we'll compensate for that now. Now I have to hang the device on the display. So do it like that. And click on next. The next thing we have to do is uh, check our brightness level. 
Now, it has to go up, which is logical, because we set the ambient um, light uh, measurement uh, to get to 153 uh, candela instead of the 120 we used before. So we have to go up in brightness, so we use the brightness key to go up. 111, 114, 18, 22, 26, 53, 41, 51, very close, 150, 162, that's too far, so we're in the middle there. So we go back to the uh, slider we opened before in the easy mode, and we just take the slider up a little bit and see what happens, 148, 154, that's good enough, 153. Go there and click next. So we now increase the brightness level of our display. So we're not going to do anything else but measure the colors like we did in basic mode, but we adjust it for the ambient light by measuring the ambient light before we started measuring our profile. So that will give us a more accurate profile. Because we're doing more colors now, the time it will take to measure the profile is now four minutes from this point. So instead of me trying to fill four minutes, we'll just fast forward this section until it's done. We'll take a look at the screen to see which colors uh, come by during the process. Okay, the process is done again, so we'll take that device off and place it back into its ambient light mode and we click next and we have to go to the next step where we actually create our profile. Now this was a still an I1, but this was done in the advanced mode using um, a specific luminance value of 153 and we did a D50 white point. We set a reminder, we can choose the ambient light monitor to, to be off or automatic or use a notify. I prefer to use a notify because I just get a uh, reminder if I'm using the screen that my ambient light has changed. The only thing you have to bear in mind is that you have to get your device on a consistent place because if you move your device very likely the ambient light will vary so it, the measurement will vary too so and if you cover it up or uh, flip it over it will measure something else so that will just give you wrong results if you do an automatic uh, change for it because your lighting hasn't changed if you move the device so we say create and save profile Um, as you can see here, we are slightly off. We have a 4990 luminance and um, or D value and a luminance of 146 instead of 153. It had a hard time reaching that luminance level. It's not off usually, but it's off a bit. And if we look at the before and after, we see a bigger difference now. Now why do we see a bigger difference? Uh, because we actually went to a D50 screen. So be, by choosing a D50 we told the screen to display not its native white, which it did before, but to show a white color that's more consistent with the printing industry, D50 color light. So we're going back in color temperature from D65 to D50. That's what you see when you switch from before to after. It's less easy to notice on the video it's very noticeable real life uh, just camera tries to compensate for it and, um, and makes it less obvious but the result is is really quite different so um, the next step you could take is to go to your quality assurance so you can actually verify if your profile is meeting the standards so if we hit that we are taken back to a patch set we can select. Uh, this is the profile we just made and we can select a uh, standard of patches or 
a spot color to see if the spot color is displayed correctly or an image to see if the image is correctly displayed. So we'll use the standard because this is a standard target that's used. And the standard target here is the Color Checker Classic, which also comes with the i1 Profiler um, and if you buy a more complete package that also does printer profiling. You can also choose one of the different uh, targets, so you can use a CMYK target uh, or standard like this one to see if you can view all of those colors correctly on your screen. Um, you can have a reference profile then set to uh, choose from any of the standards that are linked to the CMYK standard. So um, we're going to stick to the standard now because we're focused more on um, RGB workflows and photography than CMYK right now. Um, we click on next and the device is again ready to do measurements so we'll say start measurement have to rotate the head again into its measurement position and place it on the display and we click next so what it now does is it will show all the colors that are on that uh, target that standard target that was viewed uh, displayed before we started it and we'll just go through all of those patches and measure all of those exactly those colors so then you get a uh, result which shows you which of those colors it can show correctly and which it does not show correctly so you can take it off again because it's finished and we are at the measurement process the next one would be a Q&A report so we go to next because we've done the measurements we get to report and we get luckily a pass because we are within the thresholds of the certification of this being a good display with the profile that we did. The uh, average um, deviation from the colors that we have as a, as a threshold is 5 and measured is 0.94 so that's quite good. The highest uh, variation we have is 1.76 in two patches. 22 are within a delta E of 1, which is good. And the number of delta E thresholds we want to be out within our uh, target range is set to 10. If you change this, you can have a, the, the pass change to fail. If you say, I don't want any uh, patch to be outside, you get a fail. If you set two, it's fine. Or three, it's fine because they're two outside of range. This one and this one are outside of range. And the delta E is displayed here. It's 1.77 and 1.73. Don't worry about a delta E of 1.7. A delta E of less than three is quite acceptable within the proofing industry. So that's fine. Um, you can save that report. So you have an HTML file with the cinema display. Cinema, and we can save that in my desktop somewhere. So save, and we can also add it to trending. That means uh, if you have a trending uh, yet, I don't have one yet. That means you can follow how your device is doing over time. But you first have to do one complete workflow before you can actually start that. So. Um, that was checking the profile that we did and um, doing it with more advanced features. Now we could say we're done but I didn't show you the effect of all the white points. I've shown you one slightly but we're going to cover the effect of the white points and how they actually what they actually look like just by going into the preferences. So I will take this one back and finish it up here and get home. Um, I will minimize my i1 profiler and I will open up my cinema display and I will switch to color. Now I've did, done two profiles because I started out with my cinema profile which now looks very blue to me if I switch to that one. That's my native behavior of my display before I started doing any profile and if I go to my basic one it's like this, it's less blue but still slightly blue but dimmed a little bit because we went to 120 and the third one 
is the one we did with the D50 colors, which to me now look more neutral. Uh, it, on the video it might be slightly off, but you'll see the difference between them. So uh, I have these installed, and if I keep my mouse steady over one of those profiles, it shows they are located in library color sync profiles. So I did measurements with all the variable um, D values um, and created profiles from all of those. So I have those saved on my computer. So I'm going to copy those into that location. So what I'll do is I'll minimize this one. I will go to my profiles which I saved. These are the profiles I saved before. And I will open a second window. Make it a bit smaller. Uh, place it below. Uh, place it below the other one. And to get to the location of my profiles, I can use most easily the go function on your menu. Because if you hit the Alt key, you can go to library. And there you have the color sync profiles. And there you see the two profiles that I just showed you in the preferences. So those are here. Now I can add these all the variations native to D50 by copying the files there. And I'll just close these two windows because I don't need them anymore. Now if I go back to my system preferences and switch from display back to color because that needs to be updated, I see I have a whole list of profiles now which are uh, just the added profiles I just copied on there. So now we're going to show you the difference between all of the color temperatures um, that are available. So if we start off with the one that's native, very blue, and then as we go down from D75, a bit less blue, D65, again a bit less blue, D55, more or less blue, to D50, which is the least blue. So here you have the variances, and the difference between the D50 and the native is quite big. D50 to native makes it from very blue to a bit warm in color. So there you see the effect of different color temperatures. So the color temperature you choose depends on where you are going to with your files. So if you're staying on the web, then uh, most people would have either native or something close to D65 displayed. So if you change your images based on a D50 profile, your images are bound to be not looking too good on their system. If you are, however, going to print your images through a professional printer or, or on a, an inkjet printer that's profiled, um, you need to use something that's more consistent with printing. And D50 is a standard that's used within printing, be it conventional printing on a press or printing on a digital inkjet printer. That's all based on D50 light. That's just the standard they choose. Um, so choose the standard that matches the target audience you will be addressing. The D55 is the one that was used for film. So conventional film for photography had a D55 color. The D65 is the default one that photographers will use and that most applications will use if you don't choose any values yourself. D75 is just in there to show you that you can go higher in color uh, than uh, the D65 and native is the highest one you have available in your display. And that can be up to 9300 Kelvin, so quite high. So that's basically it on what you can do with your profiles. Um, the other thing you can do with the software, which I didn't show you yet, which we'll finish off with, is the uniformity because uniformity allows me to measure the color on the different parts of the screen and that's going to be interesting on this screen because I know this one is not completely consistent throughout the screen um, so we're going to just start that choose the cinema display and click on next and we'll say start measurement now we have to place the device on screen again so we do that where it's indicated. So right here. And we click on next. Now I could hang it over there, but I prefer to just 
use my hand and keep it there because it only takes a couple of seconds to do it anyway. So keep it there, click on next, measures, go to the next, click on it, measure, go to the next, measure, next. And the next. Just to throw me off, it keeps throwing that message from left to right. Next. And the last one. Next. There. So the result we have here, if we go to next is how much variance there is in my display. So at the center where I did my profile, my luminance level is now 172 candela. At the lower section it's 163. At the higher section it's 158. So it's a big variance of minus 14 and minus 10 compared to the center. If we go off to the side it's even more because here it's 148 and uh, here it's 156 so you can see that this play varies a lot might have to do with the age of the display it's not the latest display um, there are definitely better displays out there uh, than the standard displays that are provided by Apple no offense but that's just the case they are good common displays but they're not more than common and there's a lot of electronics in them that warms up and they're always compact so when it warms up it affects the region where the heat is so where there is heat inside the monitor there the color of the monitor will be different from where there's no heat so um, a more high-end monitor like uh, an ISO monitor will usually be thicker because it has more distance between the panel and things that radiate heat so it's less sensitive to that and it gives you more consistent uh, view of your uh, image so you, you can't change anything about it. I mean, you can have the tolerance level set lower. So if you say my luminance tolerance level should not be 75, but should be, let's make it really low, should be 30. Then uh, let's have, do I have 30 anywhere? No, it should be even lower. Then you see which one are not within uh, the luminance tolerance level. So if I set luminance level, delta maximum at one, only the one in the center is correct. Um, if I just increase the value, you see more of the patches being added. The last one being the top most. Uh, and basically it just indicates how consistent your screen is over the complete area of the screen. So, um, Lots more features on the i1 profiler than on standard applications for doing um, a display profile. Slightly more complicated because you have to follow a bit more steps, but it does allow you to do everything that there is available. Uh, I also like the feature there where you can have the ambient monitoring and um, where, where you can say the, um, the device will actually alert me if the values that it's reading are different from the one that was used to create the ICC profile. Uh, it now warns me that the ambient uh, diffuser is now in the wrong position. That's because it's still in the position to measure the screen. So I rotate it back up. That much should change either instantly or pretty quickly. Yeah. So I'll just get a pop-up if the ambient light changes too much which is useful. So there is a lot more you can do with the i1 profiler software, which we didn't cover because this is just about the uh, display part. Um, but there's different videos on the other topics. So if you want to know more about um, printer profiling, there will be videos available for that purpose as well. That's it for now. I uh, hope you found this useful and I'd like to thank you for watching. Mm-hmm.